Good morning, Girl Scouts. Happy Saturday. It's looking uh, beautiful outside today, so hopefully everyone's got some fun plans to get outside. My name is Marissa. I am the Program Partnerships Team Leader for Girl Scouts of Western Ohio out of the Cincinnati office, and I am streaming to you this beautiful Saturday morning from my home in Northside, Cincinnati. Today, we are going to be working on our senior traveler badge. So uh, while we wait for some folks to hop on, would love to just do an icebreaker question. Looks like we've got a few folks on now, so thanks for joining. Uh, so while we wait for some other folks to hop on, let's go ahead and kick it off. Tell me your name, where you are tuning in from, and your most desired travel destination. Dun, 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 dun. So I would love to know where you want to go. Oh, hello. Hola from Puerto Rico. Great to see you. Good morning. Happy Saturday. All right. Who else we have on this morning? So uh, again, if you're just joining now, let me know your name, where you're tuning in from, and your a favorite travel destination maybe that you've been to or that you would like to go to. Uh, so for those just hopping on now, again, I'll reintroduce myself. Uh, my name is Marissa. I am the Program and Partnerships Team Leader for Girl Scouts of Western Ohio out of the Cincinnati office. Um, and my, I, I don't even know if I can pick, I've been so many different places that I'm going to tell you about this morning uh, to help you get started with step one of your traveler badge. But uh, one of my, I'll talk about one of my favorite uh, stateside locations, um, Asheville, North Carolina. So beautiful if you haven't been there. Gorgeous, great for hiking, great restaurants, just beautiful Appalachian views. That's actually where I got engaged. So it's a special place in my heart. Uh, good morning, Ruth from Mexico. Good to see you. Paris, uh, that's a great dream destination. Absolutely. Hi, Ruth from Lima. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and jump in here. So as I mentioned this morning, we are going to be working on our senior traveler badge. So maybe I'm a little biased, but this is one of my favorite badges uh, just because I love to explore. I love to adventure. I think it's really uh, valuable to explore new places and learn, meet new people, uh, learn about different cultures and their way of life. Uh, so that's just always been something very valuable to me. Um, and I love getting other people uh, excited about seeing the world, seeing our country, um, and just really growing what you know. Uh, and that's something so beautiful about travel is it just opens up your world. Um, and I think what's really unique about Girl Scouts is that we have so many different pathways to get girls to travel as well. So I'll talk a little bit more about Girl Scout destinations. If that's not something you're familiar with, I definitely want to promote that out this morning and really answer any questions you may have. So definitely feel free, uh, you know, jump in in the comments. I want this to be interactive. So as we're kind of working through some steps for this badge, uh, please ask questions. I, I'm here to help out and, and get you excited about, you know, seeing uh, different cities and states and uh, countries, even if that's something you're into. So um, um, certain parts of the badge today. Um, so I'm going to be helping girls get started with step one. Uh, oh, hello from South Carolina. Very nice. Jada. So we'll be doing part of step one. I'll be giving you some inspiration to get started with that. And then I'm going to help you knock out steps three and four today for your badge. So we will have to work on two and five in order to complete it. But um, the beautiful thing is, I think after today, you'll uh, get a nice head start and be able to do so. So for the senior traveler badge, step one is to research destinations. So my, there's a few different options to complete step one. Uh, the one that I really like is you can create a travel board, like an inspo board, uh, with different images and information for 10 destinations that you'd like to see. So I thought it might be kind of fun, instead of me just making a travel board and talking about myself uh, and places I want to go, I thought it might be fun to give you a little bit of inspiration for your travel board. So I have been so blessed and fortunate to have been to 
uh, many different places. And so I thought it would be fun to kind of show you uh, some tokens uh, from places I've been to and maybe get you inspired uh, to make your very own travel board. So that's what we'll do for step one. For step two, um, you get to look into different itineraries and kind of explore. So um, that's going to be something I let you do independently. So maybe think of a city um, or a destination that you'd like to go to and look up different itineraries to see, you know, how much that might cost or different things that you can do in those cities. Uh, for step three, uh, I know it doesn't sound fun, but we're going to make it fun. Uh, find out how to create a budget, including ways to travel inexpensively. So as someone who loves to travel, it's really important to learn how to cut costs when you can. Uh, so we're going to make it fun, but we're going to uh, look at a couple different trips and see uh, how we can take um, kind of a luxe trip, a luxury trip that's a little bit more expensive and shave off some of those costs. So that's something we're going to do together today. Step four, uh, I love this one. So it's gain travel expertise before you go. So I am bilingual in Spanish. I majored in Spanish uh, through college um, and minored in Latino studies. And I actually studied abroad in Sevilla, Spain for uh, four months. So um, I'm going to teach you 10 Spanish phrases in case you're interested in visiting a Spanish speaking country to get you prepared for that. Um, and then the last step, the best step is to take a trip and go make a memory. And I know that's a little challenging right now, given just the current circumstances of our world. However, um, while we may not be able to travel maybe internationally right now, uh, you could still go camping and things like that. But this is the perfect time, downtime, uh, to start planning and researching. So for when uh, travel restrictions are lifted uh, and we are able to go places again, you can have a leg up uh, because you will have already uh, done your research and you'll be ready to go. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing during this time in the upcoming weeks as we uh, wait for society to kind of open back up as I'm going to be planning out all of my next trips. You best believe it. Um, so it uh, looks like we've seen I've seen a couple of people hop on. So I see Bristy from Millbury, Ohio. Uh, Disney World. That would be so fun. I went there a couple of times when I was uh, young, but I think I would have an entirely different appreciation uh, going to Disney World as an adult. I think it would be really fun. Um, okay, so let's jump in. So again, for step one, uh, research destination. So I thought it'd be fun to mix up this step, as I mentioned, and instead of um, me creating a travel board to give me examples, I have plucked uh, 10 items from 10 different places I've been. Oh, and Vanessa would love to go to Africa, so perfect. We're going to jump right into that. Um, I've actually been to Africa twice. I've been to two different destinations in Africa, so I can talk a little bit about that. Um, so for research destinations, for your inspiration board, uh, you need to research 10 different places uh, that you're interested in visiting, maybe collect some pictures or excursions, things that look exciting for you, and kind of put them in a creative way on your board. Um, and then add some additional information. So again, instead of me showing you that, I thought it would be fun to just get you expired and jazzed about seeing the world um, and get your gears going for how you could create your very own inspirational board. And maybe some of the um, relics I'm going to show you will uh, get you excited. So Vanessa, going to kick it off with Africa. I've actually brought two different things from my visits to Africa. So um, more recently, my family went on a 10-day uh, safari uh, in Tanzania, Africa. Um, it was really magical, learned all about the circle of life. Uh, we were actually just, my fiance and I were just talking about this last night. So um, one of our favorite things that we gained about our visit to Africa really was just seeing how all the resources in nature were completely used. Nothing in nature goes to waste, you know, carcasses, um, plants, everything has its purpose. So one of our favorite things that we saw when we were in Africa were uh, dung beetles. And dung beetles are these fat beetle bugs that um, <laughs> they clump together manure uh, uh, from or waste from different animals and they track over it. Um, and they roll over it <laughs> uh, until it creates a perfect ball. And then they dig a hole in the ground and they bury the dung and they lay their seeds, uh, their eggs into the manure. And that's 
the, the seeds and their eggs take nutrients from the manure and that's how they create more babies, uh, which we just thought was so wild. And we were actually reminiscing on that last night, funnily enough, but anyhow, enough about manure. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is a little uh, soapstone. Um, it's a rhino and I, I got the rhino because we actually did see a rhino on our safari and those are one of the most endangered um, animals in Africa right now. So this is from Tanzania um, from a local craftsman. So destination number one, uh, Tanzania, Africa. Um, sticking with Africa, kind of shifting gears. Um, I've also been to Morocco and Chef Chowan. Uh, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of show a different kind of item. So I've got this really beautiful a tunic that I got from my visit there. Again, made made locally, uh, really nice. Um, something really beautiful about uh, Morocco is it's known as the blue city. Um, so all of its alleyways uh, and, and streetways are this beautiful powder blue. It's really quite magical to walk through. Uh, you feel like you're, you're definitely in a different world. It, it just, the architecture is very different. Um, you know, from, from where I'm living in Cincinnati, Ohio. So a uh, very beautiful place to go visit. Um, lots of colors and really warm, welcoming people. Uh, so those are my two Africa spots. So we did one, two. So again, I'm gonna give you 10 different destinations to get excited about. I'm gonna check them off so I don't forget how many of them. Um, okay, two. Okay, so as I mentioned, I studied abroad. Well, actually we'll leave that one to last because that'll be a nice lead into step four. So, um, for some of you who know me, you know that I am Jewish and um, I've got roots back in uh, Israel. I've got family members there. So um, the one great thing, if you are Jewish, you get a um, all expenses paid trip to Israel uh, so you can get to reconnect with your roots. So I got this beautiful handmade candle from my trip to Israel. That was a 10 day trip I actually took with my childhood best friend um, on a group called Birthright. So um, something fun to look into if you're not familiar with that. Okay. Um, I actually also, so I love Latin culture. Um, as I mentioned, I, I kind of majored in that in college. So I got the chance to go to Oaxaca, Mexico um, for Dia de los Muertos. Um, and that's when they honor uh, their dead every year. Um, and they are known for their beautiful craftsmanship of um, alebrijas, which are uh, these beautiful uh, carved wooden pieces. So actually the men will cut down the trees and carve the pieces and the women will paint stories on uh, the animals. So obviously this is a hippo. Um, go Fiona if you're from Cincinnati. That's actually why I, I got this. I just really connected with it with like BB a little bit. Okay, so that was from Oaxaca, Mexico. And then... Um, so when I was actually younger, probably about your age, I had the opportunity to go abroad and do a community service through a youth education program called Rustic Pathways. Um, and I got to uh, help out on a giant panda conservation center uh, and collecting research on giant pandas because they are endangered. And so when we were there, we actually had the opportunity to go into um, some marketplaces. And so I got this really cool Chinese trap box um, as you can see, it's got um, different facets that slide. So it's got a code and it will only open if you push the walls in a certain way. So uh, this is from China. I'm kind of losing track here. I think that was five. Um, oops, drop that a little bit too far down. Um, similarly, so when I actually finished up with China, I actually um skirted over to Thailand where I went on to an elephant conservation center in the jungle. I'm an animal freak if you can't tell. Um, but we also had the chance to visit a lot of um, temples and go to markets. And so I got this really gorgeous um, compass from um, a market in Thailand. It's really beautiful. Hold it up here so you can see it. It's got some tie around the compass here. So that's from Thailand. Um, now looking uh, stateside, 
I might have actually miscounted some things. Oh, okay. So um, one of my favorite places, I love to go hiking. I love nature. Um, Sedona, Arizona is one of my favorite places. So this is a really gorgeous piece uh, painted of Sedona. You can see the beautiful red rocks and the mountains. Uh, gorgeous place to go visit if you're an outdoorsy gal like me. All right. Um, I've got really good friends who live on the East Coast. Uh, so I always try to get out there when I can. Um, I got this really fun little um, draft from a street artist in Philadelphia. If you love to eat, go to Philadelphia. It's got amazing food, really diverse uh, populace that lives there. So, so many good things to eat. Um, I When I studied abroad in Spain, um, I had the chance to go to uh, a few different places for side excursions, and I actually collect uh, different stones. Uh, so this is actually going to kind of combine a few of my last items here, but I love to keep these with me. But um, I try to collect a stone from every different place I go to. So um, I got stones from Andorra and um, Portugal, really beautiful little crystals. So I, I take those with me. So hopefully this is giving you some inspiration to go and see the world here. Um, and then the last thing that I brought, I believe the last thing I brought relic to show you, which will lead us into step uh, four, um, is this really gorgeous uh, necklace made from natural materials that I got from a good friend when I was studying in Sevilla, Spain. My good friend made this for me. Um, so again, nice little relic. Um, I love this. I'm going to hold it up really close so you all can see it. It's like made of different like nuts um, and things that have fallen from trees. So I love holding on to little uh, relics from different places I've been to. Uh, it just makes me feel really connected to my memories um, and the world, really. So, uh, so with that, step one is to research a couple of different destinations, maybe some that inspired you from things that I've shown you, um, and create your very own travel vision board. So that's step one. Okay, so for step four, I wanted to end on my uh, little token from Sevilla, Spain. Uh, so I thought it would be fun to then dive into number four, uh, which is to learn um, 10 different words or phrases uh, for um, somewhere you might want to go in their language. So just because of my background, um, I thought it might be nice to kind of go over some different uh, phrases in Spanish. And I'm going to hold each up. So in case you're watching, you can uh, take a picture of this or write it down. Um, and so I started with some that I thought would be most helpful first. Um, and then I put in some fun ones at the end. So I use this one all the time when I first moved to Spain, because in Spain, the dialect of Spanish is much different from uh, the kind that they teach often in the United States. So we grew up learning Latin Spanish, which is closest to what you might hear people from Mexico speaking. In Spain, uh, which is in Europe, they speak Castilian Spanish uh, or Castellano. Uh, so it's a completely different dialect. So when I first got there and I was pretty, I felt fluent in Spanish at the time, I <laughs> was like, this is not even Spanish. This is a completely different language. So uh, the first phrase, and I was living with, um, like a 70 year old Spanish couple in their apartment complex and I had to communicate with them. They couldn't speak a lick of English. So uh, I had to get used to um, kind of asking them to slow down. So the first phrase I wrote is puede hablar más despacio por favor. What does that mean? Can you please speak slower? <laughs> puede hablar más despacio por favor. Can you speak a little bit slower? This will come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other one, if you're traveling abroad, I need help. Necesito ayuda. I need help. Necesito ayuda. Hopefully the person you're asking for help, if you speak English, they can speak English <laughs> and help you out. Um, another one, I don't understand. No entiendo. I don't understand. No entiendo. Um, this is a good one too. Can I enter? So if you're shopping um, or maybe meeting someone new, like can you enter their home? Puedo entrar. Puedo entrar. Can I enter? 
Now, this one's a little funny. So, um, where is the bathroom? If you are uh, going to um, be abroad and it's a different speaking country, yes, you're going to need to know how to ask, where is the bathroom? So, now, I, I wrote this down, but I, I want to give a piece of advice. So, again, I'm talking about Spain. So, this is how I was taught to say, where is the bathroom? Donde está el baño? Okay, this is a Latin um, way to say this. So this is how if you went to Mexico, you would ask where the bathroom is. Donde está el baño? However, um, that's not how they ask where the bathroom is in Spain. <laughs> um, so instead of baño, they actually call bathroom servicios. So you wouldn't say donde está el baño. You would say donde está uh, el servicio. And that's how you would uh, ask where the bathroom is. This would confuse them. And Vanessa asks, can you give me information on passports and shots I need on these trips? Um, yeah, yes. Sorry, I'm assuming, Vanessa, you're talking about Africa because that's what you were interested in. Um, so depending on where you go, uh, yeah, you might need to get different uh, shots and vaccinations. For when we went to Tanzania, we did have to get a lot of different uh shots before we went, uh, like for malaria and things like that. Um, so oftentimes um, there are different um, facilities in, in your city where you can meet with if you're planning on taking in an exotic trip and they will actually give you tips and, trick, uh, tips and tricks for what you need uh, to get before you travel abroad. So there are often different travel um, informational medical centers. So depending on where you live, I highly recommend uh, connecting with them. Um, and that will help you get set up for success. Okay, so that was actually a good breaking point. So those are kind of my need to know phrases. And then these are kind of just some fun ones. So see you later. Hasta luego. See you later is hasta luego. You might know this one if you take Spanish classes in school. This one, I love to eat. That's one of the best parts about travel. Um, and in Spain, and, and they love to eat as well. So buen provecho, uh, enjoy, enjoy your meal. Buen provecho. Uh, this is another one that we said all the time when I studied abroad in Spain. Um, it's kind of a different culture. Like everything's, you know, chill. You know, everyone's on, on Spanish time. You know, we're taking siestas and uh, time isn't just constructed there. Uh, so no pasa nada, no pasa nada means it's all good. It's all good. No worries. You know, no worries. No pasta nada. This is a good one. Okay. Um, another good one too. Again, this is specifically to Spain. So the way that um, you get greeted in Spain, it's not with a handshake. It's not with a wave hello. You get two kisses, one on each cheek from whoever you're greeting. And that's just a cultural norm in Spain. Um, so kisses are besos. Um, but they refer to the little cheek kisses as besitos, which are little kisses. Besitos o besos. And that's how they greet each other, part of their culture. You get used to it after a while, I promise. Um, and then the last one, um, I made a lot of good friends who lived in Spain. Um, and so I use this when I keep in touch with them now. Te echo de menos. Te echo de menos means I miss you. So this is one I use now. Te echo de menos. So hopefully uh, you learned some new fun phrases from that. that will help you out if you ever choose to go to España, one of my favorite places. So that was for step four. And last but not least, I promise I'm going to try to make it fun. Uh, so hopefully you're at the ready, in the comments, ready to interact with me. So uh, for the last one, um, it is to take an expensive trip and rewrite it to be more cost friendly. So um, I kind of toyed around with this one for a little bit because there's so many different ways we could have gone with this. But I thought start small, you know, before you plan a week long trip somewhere, um, you can always go uh, looking at, you know, like a weekend trip, start, like start small uh, and then build up a bigger itinerary there. So I thought it would be fun um, instead of doing a big trip, you know, abroad, uh, I still love to travel from city to city in the U.S. I'm actually from uh, the Chicago suburbs originally, so love the chance to make it back to Chicago whenever I can. Uh, so I thought it could be fun to price out a trip 
uh, from Cincinnati, where I live now, to uh, downtown Chicago, to the metro proper area uh, for a weekend trip. Now, I did pick a weekend just kind of at random. So I just chose um, uh, Friday, September 18th through Sunday, September 20th. And so we're going to just imagine that that's when we're going to take our trip. Again, I just picked it at random just because it's far enough out um, to start thinking about, hopefully. And um, so imagine that we get in um, like Friday at noon. So we'll need to grab lunch and then we're going to leave Sunday after breakfast. So we're really just taking like a two day uh, trip to Chicago. So we're going to start with um, a luxe or a luxury trip. So again, we're, we're saying that we're in Cincinnati and we're going to Chicago. So I'm going to try to get some audience interaction out of you guys. See if I can get you to, to type back to me. Guess how much a round trip flight would be uh, to Chicago from Cincinnati? I'm going to wait until I see someone in the comments. I know there's a little bit of a lag. We'll take a guess. Do you think it'll be... $300, $400, $200. We're just flying economy. We're not doing anything fancy. Let's see if we can get anyone to guess. Round trip flight to Chicago from Cincinnati. Any thoughts on how much that might be without cheating and checking online? Anyone, anyone, anyone? Okay, well, I tried. I don't see anything rolling in yet. But round trip flight uh, to Chicago is $150 a person. Okay, let's say that we want to stay uh, two nights at a nice hotel in the in the loop. Oh, $700. It's a good guess. Actually, not that much. Maybe if you're flying for first class, but $150 a person. Um, $700. A bit better be a private jet, Vanessa. <laughs> um, so $150 round trip, Cincinnati to Chicago, which actually isn't that bad. $250, Stacey, that's a good guess. And honestly, this fluctuates. It really could depend. Um, and Cindy, that's also a good guess. This is, I just looked up, this is just the weekend that I chose, um, but really could depend if it's a holiday weekend that could cost more. Um, oftentimes, like flights in summer, because that could be a travel, a popular vacation month with kids being off of school. Um, sometimes flights are expensive in summer. So you do have to check. My favorite thing to use, um, I use a couple of different flight trackers. I'll give you three tips. I use Expedia. Expedia pulls from a ton of different lines and shows you um, the different prices from different airlines. So I always check Expedia. You can actually set a tracker on Google Flights. Um, so what you can do is set Google to track, like let's say you're planning a trip to Chicago in September you can let Google know when you want to go and it will constantly, not constantly, but it will occasionally ping you when flights uh, get reduced. So it'll send you emails. So I use that. And the last thing I can recommend using if you're interested in tracking flights is an app called Hopper. And it works very similarly uh, to Google Flights. It tracks trends in pricing and will um, give you um, ideas on when um, flights are going to be more expensive or cheaper. <laughs> Vanessa, you're right. I did say luxury trip. I should have thought first class. I guess I'm so used to flying economy. I don't even think about that as luxury. You're probably right, though. If we were doing a luxury trip in first class, I bet this could be closer to $500, $600. So you're right, girl. You're right. Okay. Two nights at the Hyatt Regency. Again, this is for a luxury trip. Two nights at the Hyatt Regency in the Loop, Chicago. $239 a night, which means almost $500 for two nights of stay. It's a lot of dough. It's a lot of money. Okay, so again, we flew to Chicago on this trip, which means we probably would need a cab. Again, if we're kind of being luxury, we'd need a cab to pick us up uh, from the airport, bring us to our hotel. And we'd probably need a few cab rides to take us to uh, our excursions um, or to um, different uh, restaurants, perhaps. So I, I estimated, again, we're only there for really like a day and a half, um, almost two, two full days. So I said six cab rides. Um, and I estimated that at 20 bucks a pop, $120 total. This is just a rough estimate. 
depending on how far you're going, that could fluctuate. Absolutely. And then, you know, we're there for um, almost two days. So I thought, you know, we could squeeze in three excursions if we're, if we're feeling ambitious, right? So I thought it would be fun if we did a Chicago architecture boat tour. If you haven't to Chicago, that's actually one of my favorite things to do. It's really fun. Um, beautiful architecture. Um, so that's $40 a person. But then we also want to check out the amazing architecture skyline um, from the Willis Tower, Sears Tower, uh, Sky Deck, which is $26 a person. And then last but not least, we want to go to the Shedd Aquarium, which is $40 a person. So that puts us just above $100, $106 for those three excursions, right? Okay. And then we're going to eat all of our meals out. Um, now, again, this could certainly fluctuate. Again, I know, you know, it, it, it could fluctuate, but I price that out on average at 20 bucks a meal. Now, again, if we were going luxury, luxury, you know, dinners, yeah, dinners could be 60 plus dollars, but you girls are in high school. So hopefully balling out on $60 meals just yet. So I price that out at $100 total. Maybe you guys are going to um, get some Portillo's hot dogs and uh, Euros and good stuff like that. Luminati's pizza, Pequod's pizza. Okay. Um, so with all that, hopefully you were memorizing. Um, how much do you think that Lux trip would cost total? Again, we're just there for two days. How much do you think that costed total? Try to add it up. I'll wait until I see some things pop through. How much total? So again, I'll, I'll kind of flip through. We did flights, two nights at the Hyatt Regency, six cab rides, three excursions, five meals out. How much? How much do you think that cost? I know there's a little bit of a lag time, so I'm sorry if you're typing in the comments. Woo! Five grand! That is expensive, Ari. That would be a really expensive trip for two days. My gosh. So the way that I price this out, now again, I didn't go as luxury as I could have. Uh, it looks like Chris said around 3000 So maybe I'm a little bit too bargainy to even plan and a luxury trip. Stacy, great guess. <laughs> okay, so I priced that out at $954. So around $1,000. $1,000 for a trip that's not even two full days. That's insane. No one should be spending $1,000 on a two-day trip. I'm just saying, unless you can literally pay from trees. Um, unless you're very fortunate and you can do that. I can't do that. So we're going to reprice this trip out a little bit more cost efficient. Um, now, again, this is just an estimate based on things that I did. You can certainly um, experiment with this, look at different trips to Chicago, look at different excursions. There's so many different things that you can do there. Um, but again, this is just what I priced it out. Lux trip, um, Friday afternoon, leaving Sunday morning to Chicago, around $1,000. Um, but if you are super thrifty like me, you can save some money with a cost-efficient trip to Chicago. Cost-friendly trip. Let's see how Marissa would do it, okay? All right, so instead of flying, I'm going to drive there because of the car. You could also take a bus. There are also trains. You could also do that from Cincinnati. But I have a car. I love driving. I love driving past the windmills. I love driving into the city and seeing the skyline. That's definitely one of my favorite things. So round trip gas to Chicago. Again, this is just an estimate, 70 bucks, 70 bucks total. And actually let's compare as we kind of go through. So before, instead of, um, so 70 bucks compared to a round trip flight, which is 150 bucks. I'm pretty much cutting that in half with driving, cutting it in half. And honestly, I know some people think, you know, the flight to Cincinnati or the flight to Chicago from Cincinnati is about an hour. Um, however, 
Yeah, Catherine, you could definitely do bus or train. Absolutely. You don't have to drive. Um, now, some people would argue, well, you save so much time, you know, flying with an hour long flight versus the five hour drive. But do you really? Do you really? Because technically you should get to the airport two hours before you leave for your destination. So you're there for two hours, your flight's an hour, that's three hours. And then by the time you get there, you're looking probably around four to five hours. Guess how long it takes to drive there? Four and a half to five hours. So in terms of cost efficiency and time efficiency, I, I personally don't think that flying is as time efficient as people think. Just saying. Um, all right. So cut that in half. 70 bucks. And if you did a bus, this would be even cheaper. You'd probably actually cut this in half to 35 bucks, I would guess, around 35. Okay. Then instead of say, staying at our fancy Hyatt Regency, even though I'm sure it's super nice, not not shooting on the Hyatt, um, we're going to stay in a hostel. Uh, for those who are not familiar with a hostel, uh, a hostel is kind of like a dormitory style uh, sleeping arrangement. So there's bunk beds. You often get to interact and meet with other people who are traveling. So much cheaper way to travel. And it's fun because you get to meet people. Um, it's really an engaging way to meet travelers. Um, so with a hotel, which was around $240 a night, almost $500 total, you could stay at a hostel for $68 bucks a night or $136 bucks total. And Vanessa made a great comment and said, a car rental for a person under 25 is very expensive. Absolutely. That's why a bus would probably be your better bet. Um, so take what I'm saying. Again, you can make adjustments if you're kind of pricing this out yourself. Um, so again, hostel, um, $136 for two nights. That's pretty rad. Okay. Um, so we got that. <laughs> okay. Now before... I mentioned doing uh, six cab rides um, for the people who are flying into Chicago. Um, instead of doing cabs, what if we just got um, an unlimited CTA pass? So you could take the L, which is the train, you could pop on the buses, unlimited. So cab rides, which priced us at 120 bucks for just six, maybe we would need more. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing in Chicago. Um, for unlimited CTA, three days. 10 bucks. What? 120 bucks versus 10 bucks. Public trans transit. That's where it's at. Okay. Um, okay. Now, depending on what you want to do, again, take this with a grain of salt, but three excursions versus two excursions. We're only there for two days. So, you know, we want to see as much as we can and do as much as we can. But so on our three excursions, we were going to do the architecture boat tour the uh, Sears Tower Sky Deck, and then the Shed Aquarium. So what if we cut out the Sky Deck? Now, I know a lot of people like that because the floor is made of glass and you can look down and it's really cool. However, there are a ton of amazing uh, lookout points in Chicago that you can go to for free. Uh, Hotel Roby is one. You can go to the rooftop and look out at the sky um, line from the west side of the city. There are other places you can go. Um, where you're not paying to get a cool view. So we're gonna cut that one out for two excursions, which would make um, our excursion cost $80 as opposed to over $100. So again, we're trimming the fat, we're trimming where we can. Now, this one I wrestle with a little bit because I love to eat out <laughs> when I go on vacation. That's just something fun. But if we are trying to cut costs, um, you know, that's something to consider. So instead of eating five meals out, what if we ate three meals out? So we would eat dinner out both nights, but instead um, we would uh, eat a light breakfast, like a fruit and granola bar. We will pack a picnic lunch. Um, so that'll cut them costs. So we're cutting $100 uh, from eating out to 60 bucks. Again, looking at ways to save some money here. Okay, so we've made it through. And again, this is bare bones. I know that you might have a bunch of other things you want to sprinkle in, but this is just to kind of get you thinking about a basic itinerary for a trip uh, and how you can cut costs where you can. So with that, if you remember, our quote unquote luxe trip was almost $1,000 for two days. 
let's see if you can guess how much I was able to shave off for a cost-friendly trip. So again, we were at almost $1,000 with our luxury two-day trip to Chicago in September. Let me know how much you think I was able to shave off for our cost-friendly trip. So $954 versus, dun, 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 dun. Give you a minute to see the comments roll through. And I'm pretty proud of myself for how much I was able to shave down. I think it is pretty good. I would take this trip. I would take this trip. All right, Ari said 250. It's a good guess. How much do you think? 250 is a really good guess. I didn't do that good. That would be so impressive, Ari, if you could get it down to 250. But I got it down to $356. So $356, that's pretty good for a weekend getaway. And Vanessa, yes, some hotels have complimentary breakfast. So ways to get really creative uh, with saving some money. Maybe even, maybe if you're visiting a friend, maybe you have a friend in Chicago and you don't even have to pay for somewhere to stay. And you can uh, couch surf at your friend's house. Um, all things to think about. So kind of a fun activity. That I really like this, um, and it's a good way to be usable, right? Why not plan out your all expenses dream vacation to a destination? I mean, do everything you want, go go crazy, but then redo it and and kind of figure out what you'd be comfortable uh, scaling back on. Um, it's a good exercise, and I think it's important because with travel, I, I think the most important thing when you want to plan a really solid trip is figuring out what is important to you. You know, maybe you do want to feel like you're on a luxury vacation and stay in a really gorgeous hotel in downtown Chicago. Maybe that's important to you. But for some other people, accommodations aren't as important and they would rather stay somewhere, you know, a little bit more bare bones in order to do an extra excursion. Or maybe you want to go and do a food tour. Um, so, you know, it all just depends on what is important to you when you're traveling. Is it the excursions? Is it the accommodation? Um, is it the location? You know, think of these different uh, factors when you are um, making your travel plans. So it's a fun exercise. I definitely recommend doing that, especially if you've got an upcoming trip. It's a great way to kind of um, pick and choose, you know, again, what's important to you, what your values are, um okay so step four so we completed that but again you can keep playing around i thought it was kind of fun i had fun with that i have learned i can make a trip cost efficient so then um the last thing i just kind of wanted to plug um before we sign off here in a moment um i do want to plug girl scout destinations if you are not familiar with girl scout destinations and you are um a girl scout or if you're interested in becoming a Girl Scout, um, Girl Scout travel uh, destinations are a unique program. So you can travel with girls in the country and around the world through a destination, uh, which is an event facilitated by GSUSA, uh, which is our mother organization. So these often range from two to three days. Oh, oh pardon, two days to three weeks. They can vary <laughs> and uh, are divided into six categories. So international, outdoors, science, people, apprenticeships, and getaways. So getaways are two to four day events that take place all over the country and don't actually require an application. So if rock climbing is your thing, maybe you wanna take it to the next step, uh, to the next level, like a destination, like the Ultimate Challenge or Sequoia National Park multi-sport adventure. Uh, or if you're up for the challenge, you can try something totally new. I actually know a girl who did um, um, a filmmaker destination in Hollywood um, so she could learn all about our filmmaking. So, so cool. Um, or on the flip, you could visit a world center. Uh, so England, Switzerland, India, and Mexico are homes to four centers run by the World Association of Girl Scouts, pardon, of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts, uh, which is known as WAGS. Uh, there, girls from around the globe can find out more about each other girl guide or girl scout movement and the countries they are visiting so at times these uh, these centers offer special programs and the facilities provide an expensive lot for members of WAG. if you are a girl scout or a girl guide who is watching this or again interested in becoming one 
I definitely recommend doing some research into WAGs. Um, so you could travel all over the world and meet other girls who share the same interests as you. Um, so that's my spiel for today on the Senior Traveler Badge. So to recap, we researched gently some destinations. I showed you relics from some of my destinations that will help you get inspiration for making your very own travel inspiration board. Um, you uh, still have to complete step two, which is looking into fun itineraries and hopefully our budgeting exercise kind of excited to do that. For step three, that was our budgeting exercise. We learned how to travel inexpensively by taking a more expensive trip and shaving that down to a less expensive trip. Um, for step four, we gained some travel expertise. So I shared uh, 10 phrases in Spanish uh, to get you ready to go to a Spanish speaking country, if that's something of interest to you. And then step five, the best step is to take a trip and actually go make a memory. So I, I really look forward to hearing, um, you know, your stories. Hopefully you'll get to go somewhere, somewhere really fun soon. Um, and yeah, please let us know, share your story, visit sw.org slash share your story and let us know uh, where you plan to go post in the event discussion, something fun that you learned about today. Um, and, and let us know what travel plans are. So if you enjoyed this and you are not a Girl Scout, you can go visit uh, girlscout.org slash join to learn more about members. And if you've been enjoying these videos, we are at Girl Scouts of Western Ohio doing these every day, twice a day, Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Uh, so that means if you want to sign on today at 2 p.m., my colleague Vicki Proctor is going to be helping Girl Scout ambassadors uh, with the Outdoor Art Master. But if you're not an ambassador, I know you'd enjoy it anyway. So feel free to tune in at that time. And thank you for spending your Saturday morning with me. Again, hopefully you learned uh, something new and enjoyed this. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the future. And for the rest of today, peace out, Girl Scout. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the beautiful weather if you're in the greater Cincinnati region. It's gorgeous today.